is Thursday, February 11th, and today I'm going to talk about the thrill of constant adjustment. And if you've watched some of these past ones, you may see some adjustment here on my camera. I have worked on some of the settings to help improve the color and improve the, uh, the contrast. Kind of reminds me of that old episode of 30 Rock where the Tina Fey character Liz uh, walks from a regular TV camera, walks from being in front of a regular TV camera to walking in front of an HD camera where suddenly she appears to have all sorts of uh, welts and warts and, and problems with her face. Uh, with me, I guess today you can clearly see that I have not shaven. But you can tell that my wall behind me is blue and not actually gray as it has appeared in past videos. My flash shirt is nice and red, so that's cool. And of course, the increasing gray in my hair is much more visible. But I just want to work time after time to, to make these videos better, to make my the way I look a little bit more authentic, a little bit more accurate to who I am and where I am just so that you have a better idea of who I am and where I am. But uh, I just like to change. <laughs> I like to make things better as often as I can. And that's kind of uh, what we do as speakers, too. Most of my friends out there are speakers to one degree or another, and we're always trying to improve ourselves. Now, last night, I took a Zoom call out in Salt Lake City. I went ahead and went back to not my first Toastmasters Club, but my second. My first Toastmasters Club was here in Denver for three months back in 1995. I joined, but then I couldn't keep going. But then I joined again in 1999 at this club in Salt Lake, and I have been a member uh, ever since 1999, so 21 and a half years at, at this point. But I finally zoomed back to appear at that club, which I had not been to since 2008, uh, when I, last time I lived in Salt Lake. And that's the club that uh, I, I started at and learned about contests that I first competed at. In 2002, I represented them at the semifinals for the first time and took second, just missed going to the World Championship at that early stage. Uh, then I ended up, of course, moving to Spokane and then moving back to Salt Lake, and then back to Spokane, and finally have landed here in Denver for the last uh, ten and a half, almost, almost eleven years. But uh, I showed up last night, and only one person from the club that I remember is still there. Aaron, if you're watching this, hello. Glad to have seen you last night. And I offered to give an impromptu speech, because they only had one speaker on the schedule. And after I gave the speech... Uh, the comments I got were, that did not seem like an impromptu speech. Well, it was and it wasn't. It's impromptu in the fact that I wasn't really prepared to give a speech. I mean, I always think about the fact that I might end up giving a speech when I attend the Toastmasters meeting. And I have speeches that I just give, back pocket speeches, speeches that I've given many, many times before. But I wasn't ready for it. Uh, when I found out they wanted to put me on the schedule, which happened about two minutes before the meeting started, I then had to kind of go through my mind and remind myself what the outline of my speech was. And, uh, I'm uh, 13 years ago, and I've given the speech hundreds of times since then, using stories that I crafted uh, over a period of time where I, I, I worked extremely hard to make them funny, to create dialogue, to turn them into stories that people would actually be connected to. What I hadn't worked on, what I still have never quite finished, is a conclusion. Because I've used these stories and the concept in a lot of different ways in my keynotes, as well as just in smaller speeches like the five to seven minute I gave last night. But I've never really pinned down the most recent conclusion. So it was really just putting together a bunch of stories that I've used before in a format I've used before and then popping on a conclusion that would fit for the night and fit for that particular group. So is it impromptu or is it not impromptu? I guess that's the question. Is it fair to say it's impromptu? 
Well, one of my favorite interviews was with Robin Williams. Johnny Carson and Robin Williams are talking on the couch way back when. For those of you youngsters, Johnny Carson was on The Tonight Show before Jay Leno and before, I don't know, is it Colbert who's on there now? I don't know. But Johnny Carson, a long time ago, talking to Robin Williams about how he can just come up with all the stuff out of nowhere, spontaneously. He's the funniest man on the planet. And Robin Williams basically said, well, it sounds like it's spontaneous, but I have worked so hard on these bits over time that I know them well enough that they can sound spontaneous. I can use them in the right moment, at the right time, and make it sound like it's just off the top of my head. That's what impromptu speaking really is. It's not just making up something in, in the moment. I mean, unless you're doing stand-up comedy or deliberate improv theater, impromptu speaking is being ready to speak, always knowing that you might have that opportunity and pulling stories from your, from your past that you have put together before so that you can give the audience something that is worthy of their time. Just because it's an impromptu speech doesn't mean the audience's time isn't still worth as much as it ever is when you're giving a prepared speech. So think about it. If you're a speaker at any level, do you have stories, do you have speeches that you can give at a moment's notice? If you don't, consider putting something together because the audience's time is worth it and your time is worth it. Another opportunity to practice, another opportunity to tweak and improve, to see what's working and what's not. Just like this camera today. You know, see if it's working or if it's not. So I'd love your feedback. What do you think of this camera angle? Or not the angle, but this, this camera set of settings in terms of color and contrast and definition and everything else. I hope it's working. I hope the audio is working well today as well. And we're going to keep on tweaking, keep on moving forward. Because that's all part of living. The win. Anyway, life. <laughs>